What's up, guys? Another day, another vid. Oh, it's like nine o'clock at night. I just chugged a bunch of coffee. Is it probably wake yeah. up? Okay. In this one, I wanted to break down all of the essential tools that I use for uh, the three layered method. An artist on the channel said once that he noticed that each artist seems to use their own unique approaches to their drawings to get to the same type of effects. And that's actually one of the things that uh, I love about art is that there are multiple avenues to get to the same destination. And your tools have a lot to do with that. You know, you can be a very talented artist, but your tools will help elevate your performance and kind of take you to that next level. Because, I mean, let's face it, three different types of erasers and five different types of smudgers and, and all of that definitely helps you. Hey, can you, sorry, my cat's like eating. Come here, wah wah, hey. Good boy, yeah. What do you think about tools? He's like, put me down, put me down right now. There you are. Yes, I'm gonna be providing fresh links to everything in the description of this video. So if you wanna pick up any of these tools and give them a go for yourself, when you try the three-layered method, you will be able to do that. I am literally in mid-production of uh, my next drawing tutorial. Little secret. It's in now. Kidding, you'll be able to see it soon. So having said all of that, let's break this puppy down. So the first tool up is mixed media paper. Now this is the main secret to the three layered method as far as my drawing technique is concerned. Uh, this is from Canson um, and this uh, specific binder um, is uh, the 11 inch by 14 inch dimension. We've got 60 sheets in here. Notice this. So it mentions it's great for acrylic, watercolor, pen and pencil, but not charcoal. Like what the heck's up with that? I mean, check this out. I mean, the paper itself is different from like say um, conventional charcoal paper, like Bristol paper. Conventional charcoal paper, one of the things you'll find is that it, it just, it absorbs a ton of charcoal. Now, now look at the paper here. It holds charcoal really nice. Check out the texture, see? There, there is some depth to the paper. It will hold charcoal. Think of this paper as like the Goldilocks, right? It's not too thick to where it's gonna be absorbing all of your charcoal but it's also not too smooth to where your charcoal is going to be sliding off of the paper. I know it's unconventional, but just give it a try. Okay, so next up is Warrison's Charcoal Pencils. These are ideal for sketching and drawing. Um, you have six soft pencils, four medium, and two hard pencils, which is good because you'll be using more soft charcoal than medium and hard charcoals, but they're really awesome for detail work. Um, they do not scratch the paper nearly as much. And here's a cool thing, is that um, they don't contain rainforest wood. So that's a really good thing. But um, but this these are the pencils. So hard charcoals are perfect for detail work because they contain the most amount of binder in them. So um, they actually throw a higher value because of that. Now the medium charcoals have a little less binder in them. These are perfect for building up lower values and keeping um, good control in your drawings. And then of course the soft charcoal has the least amount of binder in it, so that's perfect for like all of your base layering and, and stuff like that. You know, when it comes to using all three of these in tandem with one another, use your soft charcoals for base layering, your medium charcoals for building up lower values and having more control in your detail work. And then of course you use the hard charcoal for like, you know, hair texture and finite detail. So yeah, definitely make sure you have those. All right, and then Pentel Click Erasers. Now, a lot of traditional uh, charcoal artists will use uh, kneaded erasers, but I find that these ones are really nice. I got a lot of control, they're nice and clean, and um, they're fairly affordable. And then of course, the Ahuhu battery-operated uh, eraser. This thing's amazing, it's got a little button on top, 
and it actually houses uh, two AAA batteries. But here it is in action. You can move a lot of charcoal very quickly. Um, here I'm retrieving higher values um, in the uh, cone of uh, this chicken. Here's what the uh, batteries look like. You just pop them in. Bing, bada boom. And uh, one of the things that you'll notice about these, I don't know if it's just mine specifically, but um, whenever you're not using the eraser, just pull the batteries out and just throw them in your toolbox. And then when you're ready to use it, just pop the batteries back in. Your batteries will last a lot longer. And there you are. Just hit the paper and you are off to the races, so they say. But yeah, definitely make sure you have one of those. And then, the last one, Mono Zero. Yes, this eraser will change your drawing life. Here you can see um, how easy it is um, to retrieve uh, higher uh, values. Right here I'm doing some uh, water reflection work on the uh, back of a uh, dolphin. And uh, the cool thing about the Mono Zero eraser is that you can actually get these. These are um, uh, refills that you can get. So much like if you like it, think of say a mechanical pencil you have uh, refills right so you just press it and pull it out just like that so yeah you slowly but surely run out of erasers and then you just go ahead and press this again release it and stick the new eraser tip in there bing bada boom there you go that's actually one of the things that I love about this eraser you know is that you can you can refill it uh, that way but through, I know it's kind of it sounds kind of crazy, right? Having three different types of erasers, but um, they definitely they definitely will uh, will help you in the long run, um, especially when it comes to retrieving those those higher values. All right, and then smudgers. I hoard smudgers, and you should too. Smudgers of all different sizes. Uh, I've just collected these through different art kits and stuff. Um, as you can see, this is a 3 16th size smudger, but you can use smudgers for all sorts of things, not just smudging and blending charcoal, but actually applying charcoal too. You know, um, try to think uh, outside of the box when you use your smudgers because these things are amazing and you can use them for all sorts of different detail work. Here's a sandpaper strip, of course, if you have a buildup. Um, of uh, charcoal on it, you can go ahead and hit it like this and just grind the smudger onto the sandpaper strip and you'll get a really nice uh, sharp edge. See that? And you can use that for blending and having more control over your charcoal. But yeah, definitely, definitely have uh, a good amount of, of smudgers and you should be good to go. And then a piece of tone check paper. Now this is just a scratch piece of paper, okay? Have a sandpaper strip with uh, some soft charcoal grated onto it. Now notice this is different from the sandpaper strip that I use for my smudgers, okay? I have two different ones that I got from two different art kits. But whenever you're using your smudgers or your brush and you're picking up the charcoal off the sandpaper strip, you hit it on the tone check paper first to check your tone and then you go to your drawing. Okay, and then of course have a little bowl. I just pulled this from my kitchen and then I have a razor. Be very careful when you use this and just sharpen your, your pencil tips right into the bowl and then that way it doesn't get all over the place and you don't have to mess with garbages and stuff and when it gets full you can just take it and dump it in the garbage and you should be good to go there all right and then brushes this is here is my trusty uh number six brush brushes are absolutely amazing um, for those of you that have been following me for a while you know that i absolutely swear by brushes um, here's the brush in action. I'm just throwing and moving a lot of charcoal very quickly. Brushes are great for um, adding a form of gradation. Whoop, come back here. There you are. Uh, brushes are great for adding adding a, a form of gradation to your drawings. Um, here's a, a, a small angled brush that um, I stole from my wife's uh, makeup kit. And um, yeah, I mean, you'll actually find the makeup brushes um, especially for all you girls out there, um, will actually help your drawings for sure. So you might already have them. And then of course, a graphite pencil. This is just a humble HB uh, pencil. So right in the smack dab in the middle of the uh, graphite scale. You know, you'll need this for your outlines. If you remember back to this tutorial, this is when I did the pig and you know, it's just a quick little outline and that's it. And then, of course, my glove. 
So this is kind of the, the trick. This is just a, a regular sport wristband. Um, you can use any sport band that you want and then just push it up on your wrist. And see this protects this part of your wrist. So like when you're on the paper and you're gliding and drawing for hours on end, um, this will actually cushion your, your wrist so that um, you, know, you, don't, uh, you don't hurt yourself. And then of course you just throw the uh, three-fingered glove on, on top. And what this does is this actually keeps all of the oils and stuff from your wrist and from your hand off of the paper because of course anyone that's drawn with uh, charcoal for any length of time already knows that charcoal seems to love the, uh, the oil from your hands. So um, this is a good way where you can kind of pivot and you can move around and adjust yourself when you're drawing any way you want. And you don't have to worry about any oil from your wrist or your hand getting onto your paper and affecting your drawing. So I hope these uh, tips helped and peace.